Hey guys, it's Alyssa from Planet Alyssa, and here with that promised video about taking photos of your items for Etsy. First of all, I will apologize. I'm in my bedroom because that's where I take a lot of my pictures. Um, I have some room in here, and the lighting is pretty good um, for photos depending on the time of the day. Um, but I don't usually film videos in here, and that's because uh, this room happens to be at the front of the house, which is close to the road. I live on a pretty busy road. And so you are going to hear some car noises and hopefully it isn't too distracting. But um, this was a requested video. Christina requested this video and it was something that I planned on making one of these days because photos are a hugely important thing on Etsy. If you've used Etsy before, if you've shopped on it, um, if you look at the site, you know how much um, photos really take center stage. Um, when you do a search, that's what you see. Titles are very small underneath it. Um, the front page of Etsy is dominated by photos of different listings. And because Etsy started out um, as a handmade marketplace and is still primarily what it is, and it was started by artists who are very visual people, the site itself has a very visual layout and users have come to expect um, a very visual experience when they're shopping on Etsy. And so what this means for you and your listings is that the photo really has to be a high quality photo to encourage people to actually click on your listing and look at it further and also to purchase it. So you want to, more so than on like say eBay where you can get away with a so-so photo and still do all right with sales, I think on Etsy poor photos will um, affect your sales and you'll, you'll sell less items. But the good news is it really isn't too difficult to take and, and edit nice photos. Um, there really are two steps to taking product photos for your Etsy listings and the first is to actually take the photo and the second is to edit it. Um, so I'm going to show you what I do and first I'm going to show you some of the different tools that I use to do this. Now some of these tools are things that I've recently uh, acquired, added to my arsenal um, and other things are things that I've used for a long time. So I'm going to show you a very cheap and very useful item for taking photos on Etsy. Um, all this is, is a piece of white foam board. Uh, you can pick it up at an office supply store, probably pick it up at Target or, or Walmart or someplace like that. Um, you can also get white poster board, that works, it's a little, it's not as sturdy as, as the foam board, so I like that. A lot of the photos of items in my shop, especially older items, um, items that I've had in the shop for say, uh, more than like eight or nine months, um, were all taken using white foam board as a backdrop. Now, you do want to have a neutral background with your photos on Etsy. I like the plain white background because it really allows the, the item to stand out. Uh, if you are taking pictures of a white item, um, it can get lost on a plain white background. So you might want to switch it up for that. Um, I'll show you something I use for that. It sounds kind of strange, but uh, this is a vintage wooden cheese box. I think I actually have it for sale in the shop. but. Um, it's plain, old, natural weathered wood. So if I have something small and white, like say like a white figurine, um, I will place it on this backdrop. I'll place this in my um, photo tent and then use this as a backdrop. You can use, I mean, I know not everyone has a, uh, a vintage cheese box lying around, but you can use anything that's kind of like a plain, neutral, um, has a nice texture to it, a natural looking thing. Um, you could use any kind of piece of wood. Uh, a piece, I've seen people use slate before, that looks really nice. Um, even if you have like a large rock or something that you could use as a backdrop. You can use um, like a black background, but sometimes that's a little too harsh with the white object in it. The, the contrast is a little too much and a little too sharp there. The, the goal with Etsy is for the item to stand out. So you don't want your backdrop to be so busy or so glaring that it takes away from your object. Um, it doesn't need to be a plain white background. Um, you, you have to go with what your own style and what your own feel is for the item and for you know what you're selling. But um, I like the plain white because it does allow my objects to stand out. Um, so what I used to do, and I still use my phone board, if I'm taking pictures of like a two-dimensional thing, let's say it's a sewing pattern, a book, handkerchief, uh, anything that's kind of flat, I'm going to take a picture of it on this white background, on this foam board. In fact, those sunglasses I stole uh, last week, I took a picture of those on this backdrop. Even though they're not really a two-dimensional thing, um, this is big enough that I could just take a photo of them using this as my backdrop. 
What I used to do with three-dimensional items, um, I only have the one foam board, piece of foam board right now with me, but I would just use two of these. Um, I'd prop one up against the wall, prop the other one up on a table up against the wall, and just take pictures like that. Now when you do this, you are going to wind up with a seam where the two pieces of foam board meet. Uh, you can kind of edit it out, but you don't want to edit it too much because um, you don't want to distort um, the picture of the object. So one of my recent acquisitions for my Etsy shop, and, and I guess I use it for eBay and Amazon stuff too, um, is a photo tent, a uh, photo cube. Um, and this is a really lightweight thing. Um, it's made of like a, a nylon with wire supporting it. Uh, the nice thing about this is uh, I don't have a lot of space here. That's why I'm in my bedroom to take pictures. And this is collapsible. Um, believe it or not, this big thing collapses down to fit into this little carrying bag. Um, I could make a whole comedy routine of me trying to collapse it down to get in here because it's a little tricky, but uh, it, is, uh, it is nice if you're pressed for space. I think I spent about $30 on it. I know I picked it up on Amazon. Uh, it's not the most expensive one you can buy. There's definitely higher end ones, but it's a nice size. Most of the objects they you know, take fit perfectly inside of it. Um, it comes with a backdrop. Mine is really dirty right now, um, but it's made of like a white, to me it's like a velveteen. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. Um, and so if you are using fabric, I, I would suggest something with a little bit of texture, like a velvet or, or a micro suede or something like that. Um, usually in white, but maybe in a neutral color. Because for the light reflection, it works a little better than if you're using something like a plain cotton or like bed sheets or something. Now, one of the reasons there was a delay in making this video is because I was waiting for a sunny day. One of the keys to taking good photos for Etsy is lighting. And sunlight will give you, honestly, the best lighting uh, that you can get for taking your pictures. Um, it's gonna depend on the time of day, where you live, where your windows are positioned. Um, it's gonna take some trial and error um, for you, as it did for me, to figure out when um, is the best time to take pictures. And for me, it varies with the year, um, with the seasons. And, and I mean, we're gonna have daylight savings tomorrow, so, um, or the end of daylight savings, or the start of it, or I, I don't know how that works. But anyway, um, everything's gonna change. Right now, we're getting to about the perfect time of day for me to take pictures uh, where I live. Um, this is the south and this is the west and so it's the southwestern corner of the house and uh, so the light is pretty good in here around midday. Like I said it, it changes a little with in the summer it's a little later in the winter it's a little earlier. Um, I do have some artificial lighting that I use as well to supplement my photos. Um, this I have two of these. These are just uh, very basic. They're LED lights. They're battery powered. They work on a Sony uh, camcorder type battery that's rechargeable. And um, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, okay, it's very bright there. Um, they do have a um, like a diffuser panel. It's just a bright white light, and um, it's got these barn doors here, as they call it, and uh, a, little, a little dial on the back so you can get it brighter or lighter. Um, they have a very short stand on them, so I still have to prop them up. Uh, yeah, one gets propped up on my dresser, and one gets propped up on my card table, which I use to uh, to put my photo tent on, so that's also a collapsible thing that I can tuck away in the attic when I'm not using it. I put these on either side of my photo booth with the, the southwestern light here kind of streaming into the front of it, and I feel that gives me a pretty good amount of light for taking photos. Um, I will say this, even with all that light, my natural, my photos, if I just were to upload them right now to Etsy, they would still look pretty dark. Um, so I will show you what I do after I take the picture uh, to get them to look kind of clearer and brighter. But I'll show you a few more tools that I use for taking pictures. This is just a roll of plain white wrapping paper. This is actually a new roll because my old roll got kind of beat up. Um, a dollar at the dollar store, so not a huge investment. And when it does get beat up, it's not a big deal to buy a new roll. And I use this for items that are bigger, that I can't take on my phone board because it's not big enough. I have a growth chart that I have to take a picture of. Um, so it's pretty long because it, it measures your height. And so the phone board isn't gonna do it. 
Um, this will be big enough for it. it's other stuff like a poster, uh, maybe a big piece of fabric that I have to sell. So this works pretty good for that. I'll lay this out on the floor and take my pictures that way. And of course you could just use this as a set of foam board to take pictures if you wanted to, you know, do it quick and cheap. Some other tools that I have here, um, certainly not something necessary, um, but this comes in handy. It's a glass head. It's a little creepy looking, right? Um, I picked it up for $5 at a garage sale, um, so I thought, hey, it works for like taking pictures of hats. Um, it works really well for that because, um, you know, you have the nice round head to give it a shape, especially if it's a, something like a ball cap or something that looks kind of squashed without, without some stuffing there. And an apple. Um, it's not a real one. It's actually a fake apple, also from the dollar store. Um, but it looks pretty real and um, it's great for showing size relevance when you're taking your photos. Um, when you're taking your photos, you want to think about having a photo that's going to be your main image. You know, that's what people are going to see on the search on, in your store page. Um, but then you want other, page, uh, other pictures. You have up to five on Etsy that you can use. So you want a picture that shows, you know, maybe detail, you know, the texture, um, if there are any flaws, you do want to maybe take a picture of at least one of them. Um, but you also want to take a picture that shows size relevance. And so an apple works pretty well for that. Even though you'll have the measurements of the item in your listing, people still are very visual. They want to see size. So when you show a normal sized apple next to it, um, it gives them an idea of how big or small something is. Sometimes I also just use my hand, especially if it's like a two-dimensional thing, I will just hold it against the, uh, the white foam board background and take a picture that way. Because you can tell, I mean, I have a relatively normal sized hand, so you can kind of figure out how big or small the item is that way. But you might want to take the back of an object or the underneath of an object or from a different angle. Probably want to take more than five photos when you're taking photos, only because you're going to wind up with one that came out blurry or you know, you don't like or, or whatever. So you're probably gonna trash a few of the photos and just keep the best five. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and show you how I take pictures of items. It's really not that exciting, but uh, we'll do the whole process first, first taking the pictures and then I'll show you how I edit them on my computer. Okay, the lights are now set up. Uh, the lights, by the way, are also things that I bought on Amazon. The same time I bought the Photo Cube. Um, they're very inexpensive, they're very cheaply made. Um, if I was a professional photographer, I would laugh at these things, but um, for my purposes, they work well. They are LED, so they don't get hot like uh, like real photo lights, um, which is nice because I don't want to start a fire accidentally. I picked these two things up this week. These are our salt and pepper shakers in the shape of fish. Um, kind of cute, right? So we're gonna take some pictures of these in the photo cube, and um, I'll show you what I do. I do have a tripod, by the way. It's it's over there in the corner. I almost never use it. It's kind of a pain to get it set up just right, and, and then I want to take stuff from different angles, so I have to take the camera off the tripod anyway. The nice thing about the tripod is you will get a really clear shot if you're using a tripod or or balancing your camera on a flat surface um, because there's no movement at all, so it comes out really clear. By the way, um, I guess I didn't show you this. Um, this is my camera that I use for taking pictures. It is not an SLR camera. I know it kind of looks like that, but um, this is just a basic, I guess a little bit more than basic, but it's it's a digital camera. It's a Fujifilm Fine Pix. Um, it works really nice for taking pictures. Um, if you are not a professional photographer and want to take some really nice pictures, I would recommend something like the Fujifilm Fine Fix um, because I'm not a professional photographer and I've taken some really nice pictures with this camera. You definitely don't need to invest in a camera. This was probably about a $150 camera, by the way. Um, so it's not crazy expensive like, like some of the single lens reflex cameras. But um, you can take nice pictures and if you're looking for a nice uh, digital camera, I would recommend this one. But here's the thing. Uh, for taking pictures for Etsy or eBay or wherever you're taking pictures for, um, smartphone technology has gotten so advanced that you could use your camera uh, on your phone and take as good a picture as I'm going to take with this today. I'm used to this, I'm comfortable with this. Um, I have a camera card in here which I can just pop out and pop into my computer to upload the pictures, so it makes it pretty easy for me. Yeah, if you're not looking to invest in a new camera, um, use your phone. Uh, they have gotten so advanced that you can take uh, nice sharp pictures with them. I'm going to take some pictures of the fish here and I'll take them for a few different angles. One thing to keep in mind when you're taking pictures, um, at least for your main image, know that it's going to get cropped to like a square shape on Etsy. So take a photo that it's going to have some extra white space if you know you needed to crop it, especially if something like that's kind of long or wide. Um, these fit nicely in the square anyway. 
And I'm taking more than the five photos just because I know that I'm gonna be tossing some out. I'm gonna get my apple. These are salt and pepper shakers, so I especially wanna make sure I take a picture of the bottom. One of the, one of the shakers is actually missing its cork stopper. They're also marked Japan on the base, so I wanna make sure I get that in here. Um, this one has a piece of tape on it that is not, it's actually an old piece of tape. So I want to take a picture of that. It has a, a marking on there that says Lido Lube 1948. Uh, I have no idea what that means. I don't know if that's a brand name. If somebody collected shakers and marked who gave them to her as a gift, Lido Lube gave her these, I have no idea. If your digital camera has a macro setting, uh, you can use that to take pictures of close up things. It, it looks like a flower. That's that's it's usually like a little tooled up on your camera. Don't quote me on this, but I think your, your smartphone will actually do that automatically. And you can set your cameras to, to do everything automatically. This one has semi-automatic, I guess, and fully automatic where it totally recognizes and supposedly uh, will change it. Um, my camera has a thing called blink detected, which supposedly will show you when somebody's blinking so you retake a picture, um, you know, when you're taking like a portrait photo or something. Um, here's the thing, I take a lot of pictures for Etsy of things like, uh, you know, that has made somebody's face on it, like sheet music, or even something like this, a figurine, and I get blink detected all the time. Uh, so I don't think these objects are blinking at me, so my blink detected is, is not so useful. It detects a lot of blinks that aren't happening. And yeah, I took way more than five pictures. I know that I'm gonna get rid of some of them. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention, if you notice I'm in kind of white today, um, and that isn't totally accidental. Um, what you wear, if you wear, I mean, you don't have to dress in white or, or gray or something like that, but if you are wearing a bright color, um, say like, like a neon color, a bright pink, bright orange or something, uh, the light will reflect off your, your shirt, uh, off your clothes, and it will actually distort the image. You'll, you'll get like an orangish tint or a pinkish tint or whatever to your picture. Um, so you might want to avoid wearing really bright colors on a day when you know you're going to be taking photos of items or at least throw something over you like a gray sweatshirt or, or black sweatshirt or something like that um, to, to help tone it down. Okay guys, we're back in my messy office and uh, I, uh, I just uploaded the photos for my camera card so I'm going to show you how I go about editing them. Uh, first of all, there are some people who might try to tell you that you need fancy editing software that costs a lot of money, something like Photoshop or something like that. Uh, don't listen to them, they're wrong. You really don't need that for what we're gonna do. I, I use a Mac and I use the built-in software on my Mac, which is iPhoto, uh, to edit all my photos for Etsy. I know there is a similar program on PCs that you can use, I have used in the past. Okay, so I'm in iPhoto and as you can see, I have the pictures here that I've taken of those fish salt and pepper shakers. Um, I ended up actually taking nine photos, so I can't use them all um, because I'm only allowed five photos on Etsy. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna get rid of a few of them. I'm gonna just open them up bigger so you can see each of the photos in their unedited form. Okay, there we go. And um, so there's the first one I took. That'll probably be the main image I think that I use. Um, well, that one's kind of cool too because they're from different angles and I like that one too. So I'm gonna have to decide. Um, but there they are from the front. There they are with the apple to show the size relevance. There's the bottom so you can see that the, the stopper is missing on one. You can see the Japan there. Um, you can see the tape in this one so I might not need this close-up picture I took of the tape. Um, there's a close-up picture there when the fish, there's another close-up picture. Um, so I have more than I need. Oh, that's the next thing I took pictures of. I really have to decide here. Um, I think I like the brown close-up better, so I'm gonna get rid of this blue close-up one. I probably don't need two from the bottom, even though this one does clearly show that Lita Lou tape, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Although, kind of, I like it, well, no, I don't think we'll do it that way. I like the one on the front, so now I gotta figure which of these three um, that I'm gonna keep. And I want to look at this one again because I kind of really like the way that came out, but it is a little bit dark. Even when I lighten it up, it might be too dark. And those do have a little bit of a glare on them. So I'm actually going to see after I edit them, which I like, I'm going to get rid of this one because I'm not as crazy about that. Um, so now we're going to open it up and we're going to use our editing tools. These are really basic editing tools, so any basic photo editor will have these built in. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is crop it. Um, obviously there's a lot of extra space there and we want a basically a square shape for that main photo on Etsy. A little extra white around the edges. Um, that looks like a nice size. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lighten it. Um, 
in iPhoto, this is under effects. Um, if you're using a different program, like whatever's built into a PC, it'll probably be a little different, but it's the same idea of brightening or lightening a photo. And um, the trick here is to make it light enough so that it's not too dark, but also you don't want to distort the image. Um, I'm going to actually just go ahead and distort it just to show you what'll happen if I make it too bright. Um, see, it starts to get washed out and, and too faded there. So I want to bring it down a little. You can see the whole fish. That's probably about good. Um, if you notice, there's this like dark spot here because my backdrop is dirty. Um, but thankfully, we can just retouch it and go like that, and uh, it is gone. So that's the nice main image. Let me just see how well I like the other one that I kept too, um, to see which came out better. So this one has a little bit of less white thing, white space, because I, I took it a little bit closer. We're gonna go like that. Now it does look pretty dark, so let's see how well it lightens up. You also notice there's a lot of shadows in the background of this picture, and as I lighten it up, um, they disappear. So you don't really see them anymore when you lighten it. Um, I kinda like that. Let me just go back and forth between the two uh, and see which I prefer. Hmm. I kind of actually like the first one better, so I think I'm going to keep that one. And I go through and do that with each of these photos. I mean, I'm taking kind of a time as I'm explaining it, but it really doesn't take long just to, to kind of hit the lighten button. I know you hear that, that mouse click there. Sorry for that. It's kind of annoying. There's a little bit of dirt on there. I could probably get rid of that. Um, it would probably be easier to just wash my backdrop, but, you know, I'm lazy. This one I'm not going to make square just because... It's not going to be the main image and somebody will click on it to see a close-up if they want to see how big they actually are. So when, even though it'll crop it in the preview, um, when you click on the image, it'll show it the full size. Same thing with this. I don't need to really have it a square shape. And uh, there's that piece of dirt again. A few more there. Sometimes if my computer monitor is really dirty, I can't tell if the dirt is on the screen or on the photo. I think I might have lightened that one up a little bit too much, so let me just bring it down a little. Um, so that's all I'm doing, really, to, uh, to touch them up and make them look clear. It's like there's a little piece of hair there. Um, so I can make that go away. There's another spot there. There's a lot of spots. I really got to clean that backdrop. But, um, yeah, now I have five good photos of the fishies and, um, I can go ahead and list them on Etsy. So it might take you some time if you haven't taken a lot of pictures before or you're new to this, um, to kind of figure out the tips and tricks, find out the best time to take photos. By the way, if you live in a nice warm area, you could always take pictures outside. Um, the key is you want indirect sunlight, not direct sunlight. So, um, you know, if the sun's shining through the window and, you know, making like, you know, a nice light spot on the ground or whatever, um, that's where you want to avoid taking the picture because it's going to be too bright and too washed out. But um, if you take it, you know, away from that, but you still have the light shining in, it'll give you a nice picture. Um, and so the same is true outside. You don't want to take it directly in the sun, but indirectly. Um, so you have the brightness of the sun without the, the really brightness that washes it out. And a lot of it is, is trial and error, figuring out what works best for you. Um, again, uh, the photo editing, I would not spend a lot of money on software because there's really no need for it. Um, we're just doing really basic things like lightening pictures up, cropping them, um, maybe touching up a few dirt marks or something here. Don't touch up dirt marks on your object, but if you have it on the background, uh, you can definitely do that because no one's buying your background, so that's not dishonesty. But yeah, I can't stress enough how important uh, taking good product photos is on Etsy and um, you know, take a look at how other sites, other shops do it, um, the different backgrounds they use. Um, if you're not really happy with the bright white, um, look at some different ones and find out what works best for you and what, you know, as a shopper to you is visually appealing. What you don't want to do is, you know, take a picture of it on your messy kitchen table or um, your unmade bed. I've seen that before. Um, you know, you want to be professional about it. I think you probably are if you're watching these videos already, so I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But yeah, I hope this helps you. And if you have any questions about taking photos or about anything else on Etsy, feel free to, to ask them in the comments below. And um, 
you know, if you enjoyed this video and uh, are not already a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, or give this video a thumbs up. I make videos every week showing the different items I've sold on Etsy, the different vintage items I've sold. I've also started making some videos on the things that I sell on Amazon and a little bit of some tips for Amazon um, as I now sell there as well. And um, okay, thank you everyone for watching and I will see you guys soon.